Ron was a D.C. police officer for 25 years. He walked the beat. He did community policing. He could make his cases. The people trusted him. They respected him. And uh, his beat was primarily Alvin Morgan. Um, he now heads the National Black Police Association. He's the executive director. And Ron, I like to have Ron with me on many occasions because we think a lot. But he had me down in Miami speaking to his association, and those guys are real cops. I mean, I was sitting, you know, I'm thinking, Ron Hampton's group. But I sat next to a, a cop from Oakland, and I said, yeah, the video surveillance company, well, yes, but they have no expectation of privacy in public places. I said, Ron, I'm not sure Ron is in step with the Ron. With, anyway, Ron Hampton. <laughs> I got a call from the Post reporter, uh, Allison Klein, about this, and I don't know whether she was really wanting to interview me or whether she was trying to get a, a reaction or whatever it was. When she first told me what this was, and I hadn't heard about it, I said, they must be crazy. <laughs> and, and, and that was my, and I, and I still think that they're crazy. I think St. Louis was crazy. I think they were crazy in Boston because uh, if you want to do different things in the community as it relates to crime and public safety, then you can do it. But first of all, you have to begin to engage the community and work on building trust and confidence. And then you can do these kind of things, not mistrust. And, and I don't mean by deceit, I'm talking about genuine engagement in our community. And, and, I, and I like to think that I did that as a police officer. I worked in Adams Morgan. I walked Harvard Street to, to Euclid, 18th to 16th. I had 5,000 residents in my neighborhood. I can tell you how many fire plugs on my block, how many stores, all of those kind of things. And parents would come to me and talk to me about the kind of things that were going on and what they needed. And so we were able to, to, to achieve certain things. But all of this started after 9-11, in my opinion. And the kind of things that we have seen in policing have happened as a result of policing changing their priorities. Policing is nothing like the military, but we have seen the militarization of our police departments, and this is another move in that direction of the militarization. It's not just the fatigues or the utility uniforms that you see them wear. It's, it's the whole mindset. And if they wanted to do something about the problem here in the District of Columbia, three police officers and a preacher, uh, they can do it a different way. And matter of fact, I talked about those and I raised them in the meeting when we met with the chief the other day. And yet, you know, they're still stuck on stupid, for lack of a better term, about wanting to do it their way. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna endear the community to the police. It's just not gonna do it. But let me suggest this to you. I wouldn't let them in my house under, under any circumstances. The fact of the matter is I don't know what's in my house. Someone talked about somebody coming in your house, sitting down on the sofa, something falling out their pocket into the thing. I don't, as a habit, go through my house and check under the cushions. I'm not going to do that. I don't look up underneath the bed, although I think I know who's coming in and out of my house because I'm, I'm a concerned, committed parent, but I, I don't check all of the time. Neither do, neither do any of us. We don't check all the time. Right now, if I were to ask you what was in your purse and can you account for it, or your wallet or your backpack or your bag, you can't do it because you haven't looked in it. So you don't know what's in there. But there are plenty of cases that have been before many courts in this country about people allowing or consent searches supposedly, and yet they were caught with implements of crime, narcotics, other things, simply because people were confronted with this image of authority and allowed that to happen. And I'm telling you, there's something wrong with that. In my opinion, this is only going to hurt the Metropolitan Police Department's attempt to do the kind of things that they claim that they want to do in our community. It's going to hurt that. These are the same communities now, and I, I, try, I try to pay attention to what's going on. These are the same communities that the chief and the head of patrol uh, are constantly going on television asking this community to talk to them about what's happening in the community, about who's committing crime. And these folks don't even want to talk to the police about that. So why would I open up my door to the police when I don't want to talk to them? I just don't get that. They don't get it either. But 
you ought to get it because it's about you having established the necessary relationship, the groundwork, the foundation, the engagement that is needed to go into communities and work with people around the issues and things that are going on. That's very simple. And if you have that relationship, then it's going to happen. It's like a marriage. If it's a marriage, a real marriage, when a relationship and engagement, all those kind of things, they're products. There's a byproduct of that. That byproduct don't exist in our communities when we talk about policing and black and brown and poor communities because they haven't concentrated on building that relationship that's needed. They sort of disregard it. They only go to it when they think they need it or they're trying to catch some perpetrator. And, that, and they're not going, that's not going to happen. But the other thing that I worry about is this notion about, uh, the lawyer brought it up, about whether they're informed or not. And when they make that thing, that's like me driving down the highway at 75 miles an hour and the speed limit 55. I get pulled over, the police stand up in this official looking uniform and say, I'm going to write you a ticket, but while I'm standing here, cannot search your trunk. A lot of people will say to themselves, well, I haven't done anything wrong. I ain't got nothing to worry about. So they open up the trunk. Now, what's going 75 and the 55 mile an hour speeding them and getting a ticket got to do with opening up my trunk? Not a thing. There's no justification for that. But we would open up our trunk because we don't know. I mean, we think we know what's in there. And I'm telling you, you don't know what's in your trunk. Most of us don't go in our trunk, and least of all, we don't search it. <laughs> so you don't know who put something in there. And so it, it's just crazy, and we shouldn't allow them to do it. I'm not going to allow them to do any of that. And then my last reason, Johnny, for not allowing them to do it, I work with some of those guys, so I know what they're capable of. Exactly. And sometimes they do it because they really sincerely think or feel like they want to do something about crime. Well, if you want to do something about crime, go out there and do the things that will be a natural process, a byproduct of working in communities, gaining trust, confidence, working with people, building that positive thing in our community, and then you'll see the results of it. It's, it's very easy. And, and, and there are a lot, lot of police officers I work with, and Johnny, in our organization, who feel the same way. I've been getting telephone calls and emails from all over the country, even outside of the country, since this happened. None of our members think that this is a good idea. They, they had the same response I had to it. You know, the police ought to just go back to doing just plain old good police work. Ain't nothing wrong with that. This is a shortcut. But it's a, it, if it, it's a shortcut, though, if you allow them to do it, though, that, that inch will turn into a mile. You can bet that. Because I've seen too many examples of it. Operation Clean Sweep. You know, all of those kind of things. We can take you back, you know. I spent 25 years, almost 25 years on the police department, and thank God I've been retired for half of how long I worked there. But it's a very different police department now than it was when I was there. And so we really need to be careful about what it is that they're doing. Let's make them earn the money that we pay them to provide public safety and work in our communities.